Peace, black family. In this presentation, we're going to go over George Washington. This is a part of the series exposing the U.S. presidents in their statements and their actions towards blacks. Because these people and their descendants will have you believe that the most evil atrocities to occur happen between Hitler and the Jews. And they teach your kids about it. And they teach your kids about these people like they're some supposed hero. But let's just get straight into it. It says, George Washington used legal loopholes to avoid freeing his slaves. One of his former, one of his former slaves fled to New Hampshire to escape becoming a wedding present. But it says America's first president was a wealthy and powerful. His possessions included false teeth, which he got, which he was, and they try to say that he was buying them off of slaves, but he had slave teeth. A slave teeth made up his false teeth. He had uh, hats and nearly 150 slaves. George Washington owned slaves and uh, relied on their labor. And as Eric Armstrong Dunbar reports for the New York Times, he used legal loopholes to avoid freeing them even in the northern states, even as the northern states worked to abolish slavery. Washington inherited his first 10 slaves when he was just 10 years old. Dunbar reports, in the days before Washington, D.C. was named the capital, the new president lived in New York and Pennsylvania. States that was gradu gradually abolishing slavery, but Washington wasn't too eager to get rid of his own slaves, says Dunbar, even when he moved to Philadelphia. But in 1780, Pennsylvania passed the Gradual uh, Abolition Act, a law that freed people after they turned 28. So you can enslave these people. These people can be born into slavery up until the age of 28. So you then basically took away their physical prime for them and now at, for the most part, because you at 28, you shouldn't be out of your physical prime. I hope not. But just when you're in your early 20s, to I guess to the, by the time you're about 28 to 30, like that's your physical peak, though. This is like going downhill after you hit them points. And that automatically freed any slave who moved to the state and lived there for more than six months. So turning 28 free any slave that lived there for more than six months. So now we're going to get into what, what Washington did. People want to tell you about these people, so let's see what Washington did. How should we look at Washington? Dunbar tells the story of how Washington got around it. But Washington developed a, a candy strategy. Give me one second. The way my phone is. Y'all will be able to see it better, but I'm recording this on my phone, so let me make this bigger. Washington developed a, a canny strategy that would protect his property and allow him to avoid public scrutiny. Every six months, the president, the president's slave would travel back to Mount Vernon and would journey with Mrs. Washington outside the boundaries of the state. So in essence, the Washingtons reset the clock. So because these people wasn't living in Pennsylvania for six years, and he just kept removing these people and moving these people around, he had a loophole. The president was so secretive when writing to his personal secretary, Tobias Lear, in uh, 1791, I request that these sediments and this advice may be known to none but yourself and Miss Washington. So he said, I don't even tell people about the wickedness that I'm doing because I'm too lazy to work the land. I'm viewed as a hero for a country who fighting supposed oppression while I'm enslaving the indigenous people and the Africans who are over here. And when I said indigenous people, I'm talking about black folks. And I only said blacks and Africans so people can know that it was indigenous black people here and it was uh, Africans who came to the U.S. as slaves at that time. Both of them was enslaved. They didn't care that this, and we already been through this in a society, but they didn't care that these people were uh, black Indians. 
that didn't keep them from being enslaved. That's what people got to understand. Whom all causes in countries are equal and unlike different. So now I'm going to get, now we're about to get into how George Washington view, viewed the black soldier during the Revolutionary War. Whom all causes in countries are equal and unlike different. The rights of mankind and freedom of America will have the numbers sufficient to support them without resorting to such wretched assistance. Let those who wish to put shackles upon freemen fill their ranks, place their confidence in such miscreants. Neither Negro boys unable, neither Negro boys unable to bear arms, nor old men unfit to endure, endure the fatigues of the campaign, are to be enlisted. So George Washington putting out an order that puts Negroes in the same category as old men and boys unable to bear arms. So George Washington didn't want black people fighting in it. But you got to realize the first black person to get killed was Crispus Attucks. Crispus Attucks was the, uh, no, the first person to get killed to start the Revolutionary War was Crispus Attucks. Crispus Attucks was the first blaster, like now I said. And I brought up George Washington having this slave, but this is an advertisement when uh only judge only judge or owner judge you see uh in, in different spellings but anyway he put out a, they put out an ad he put out an ad or whatever talking about his runaway slave and basically uh putting out the identifications or whatever to return his said property but this is the dude George Washington though man he didn't want black people serving in the military with him this, and he became the president, though. The president or the leading general, whatever you want to call George Washington, the commander-in-chief, didn't want black people serving. He didn't want that wretched assistant. We also go to the loopholes that this guy and his wife were using to get around slave laws to keep slaves. So that means he had no thoughts on freeing black people at that time. He viewed them as slaves because if he thought it was some type of equality, he would have freed them people. After they six months, he said, man, you know what? What I'm doing is wrong. Let me have this epiphany that black people think I got. I'm going to have this epiphany, and I'm like, oh, man, this is wrong. Let me end this. That never happened. I showed that with Abraham Lincoln. He didn't want to give black people equality, and I'm about to keep going through these presidents. But this is a free black society presentation, family. Peace. Drop that here. Black Seminoles, they labeled us criminals, yeah. enslaved us at home. We the aboriginals, bone of pigs, they lay omegas for visual. Yeah. Back Creek, lost lunar stones for biblical, right, nothing yeah. fictional. Our people are invincible, we the pinnacle. More knowledge than a million schools. They got it so they wrote us out of history. You know how they do, but my feathers.